Okay, welcome back to our final segment, wrap up of day two. This is the Cube, two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Where we go out to the events, extract a signal from the noise. This is Wikibon and SiliconANGLE's exclusive coverage of IBM Information on Demand. Uh, day two, this is our final wrap up. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by my co host Dave Vellante. And as usual, uh, Jeff Kelly's coming in after scouring all the stories, talking to customers. Jeff Kelly, uh, big data, leading big data analyst in the marketplace. Jeff, Dave, welcome to our final wrap up. Thank you, John. <laughs> what a tight schedule. No breaks today. Just again, the cube, just power through, amazing <laughs> interviews. Um, great job by the team. Great job by you the know. team. Great, Dave. One comment I want to make about IBM IOD is that obviously IBM is a very professional blue chip company, but the guests are really smart. I mean, there are, you know, we're looking at the degrees, the pedigree, the experience. We have uh, great people from great educational backgrounds. We got entrepreneurs who built companies up from scratch. We got uh, M and A discussions. Yeah, the Overall, Now Factory, that just, was great. Just an amazing from guys. Ireland. Just great conversations. Again, we learned a lot here. Um, let's get right into it, Dave. What did you learn today? Give a quick summary of day two. Well, today was you know a lot about uh, the, the the business of social analytics. You know, overlaying uh, uh, social on top of applications. I mean, I've said for a while. I think this is where the, the what the direction is going to be. It's going to uh, necessitate a change in user interface, user experience. It can be embedded essentially into every single app. And I think this is just the beginning. I think the other thing is, I, I think really IBM's done a good job of solidifying its position with IOD as the leading big data conference. This is the, the largest big data conference now on the planet. It's bigger than Hadoop World. It's bigger than you know, Giga Ohm Structure and, and any other event that's solely dedicated to big data analytics. So I think IBM did a good job overall. John, what do you think? Well, that last comment you made is interesting. You know, about you talk about giga ohm structure and other events. I think what you're seeing is a direct business model. One of the things that James uh, Kobiel has talked about is that you know the democratization continues with technology. The web was a direct business model with e-commerce and websites, and now social with people. But you know, the IBM's event here is a great example of what I feel will be the destruction of the conference business. Um, I mean, how, how good can an independent media company try to lure customers in when you have this kind of power going direct? We got analysts working for IBM. But I think the main theme here at this show, obviously, is two things. The cloud with Amazon, Amazon going direct, you got end user behavior with mobile going on. You have major, major focus on direct business model changes, a complete radical reconstruction of how people are going to do business. The end user is all about social. The social is the, is the, is the environment. I don't mean social media using Twitter. I mean people are connecting people's, people's relationships with each other, the humanization of the internet where computer science meets social science. That humanization we heard from Marsha today, big factor. So you put those two together, those are the two mega trends I think IOD successfully vectored into, and that is big data analytics, obviously the most trending topic right now in the tech business. The killer app. The killer app for is, is analytics, we know that. Um, end user is all about now, I want information on my mobile device, now you have wearable computers with augmented reality, and it's the social. Okay, those are the two big things. And then under that, as under the hood, is the engine of innovation, the innovation strategies around um, uh, cognitive computing, in memory, real time, the you know, data monetization, SaaS, multifunction form factor cloud. That's the, the geeky stuff under the hood, virtualization, that is unbelievably exciting if you're a tech geek. So again, you got a perfect storm. Technology changes that, that are just enabling massive scale, enabling a direct business model, changing uh, the user experience and expectation, which in, in essence changing society and ultimately how the people buy, how they form relationships. So to me, I think IBM nailed, is nailing their strategy in terms of the vector they're taking. And then a big honking portfolio behind it and then a giant services business that not a lot of people talk about, but it's like uh, uh, we had, uh, uh, was it Fred Balboni on? Fred Balboni, right? I believe it was Fred Balboni. He yes. was amazing, right? Just talking about what, what IBM services capabilities are. A lot of people criticize IBM's because, oh, it's a services company. Wow, what a secret weapon that is to be able to go into an industry with domain expertise and deliver on the promise, right? So we also heard some other concepts, Dave. We heard uh, the sea change, you know, the killing the old business models and bringing in the new attention. And, and time is the new currency. We had a blog post up on that. Uh, we heard about you know the, the cloud, multi-factor, form factor, and hybrid. And we heard from customers, and we heard a CIO come on board. And this is a trend. Uh, you know, I'm going to bring it up because I've heard this before. You know, IT is a profit center. 
I mean, that is, that is a concept I see gaining traction. I think it's a little bit difficult to do when you look at the, what's on the balance sheet relative to the data center and facilities and management. Dave, you and I talk about it all the time. You know, that's the Achilles heel of this entire <laughs> data center business is that, yeah. you know, that, got, that, that write-off is looming around the corner and what the hell are they going to do with that? So, you know, when they take down the depreciation on the assets, what are they, they going to do? So th there's big cost structure involved there. The cloud turns IT cost into profits, right? That's what we heard. Jeff, what are you hearing? Jeff, uh, Jeff Kelly, what are you hearing out there? I see you were out all day today talking to customers. You were getting briefings. Uh, what stories did you come back with? What, what insights can you share? Well, I spoke with uh, a handful of customers today, um, you know, all doing some really interesting things. Uh, spoke with Constant Contact. Uh, doing some interesting things around uh, really analyzing all that data related to uh, you know the, the email newsletters their customers send, uh, figuring out things like when's the best time of day to call. They're starting to uh, best time of day to send that email. They're starting to do some experiment with some analytics around what are some of the the, the word the key words in in a in a subject line that's going to get people to open up. Um, their newsletters. So they're starting to do some interesting things. Uh, you know, the, the kind of the core of what they're doing now is around um, Netiza and data warehousing, um, uh, but they're looking forward. And so that's one of the themes or one of the, the constants I think I saw around a lot of the customers I spoke to is, you know, they're, they're one or two years behind uh, the messaging and the, and, and the vision that IBM is putting out there, which is not surprising. I mean, IBM is pushing uh, their vision, their thought leadership. They're talking about um, you know, the cutting edge things they can do with big data and analytics around streams, around embedding analytics into business processes. Um, so it's not surprising that the, the customers are, are, you know, a couple of years behind that. Um, but all the customers I talk to are very uh, intrigued by the, what IBM's doing and the, mess and the, and the, uh, the vision they're laying out. Um, and they're getting good value from what they're doing right now. It might not be big data analytics in the sense that it's not Hadoop and it's not streaming real-time data, but they're doing some interesting things with large volumes of data that are actually moving the needle. Um, you know, I spoke in a small company, um, uh, North, uh, Northwest Trek Wildlife Park uh, and Point Defiance Zoo and Aquarium I spoke to. 80 people in this company. They're doing things like just now they've, you can buy your ticket with your mobile device. Now they're collecting data. They know who their customers are. They can improve uh, retention rates. They can they can uh, start campaigns that actually personalize offers. So you know these are not in some sense not how big, the most how big, cutting how edge, big, but they're how, doing interesting things and it's moving the needle. How big of an impact are they having? And I see they're they're customers that are that are propped up there by IBM. So you know I don't want to say IBM propaganda because they're real customers. So it's not propaganda in a sense. It's just their customers that they're presenting forward. Um, what, did you get a sense of how real that was in terms of scale? Was it size big size changes? Was it the major? Uh, well, I didn't get a sense that, uh, like I said, these, it, it, you're right to point out, it's IBM customers that <laughs> IBM brings up. So no, they're happy customers, they're yeah. the same way. They, when people are right. happy, they tell everybody. And that's, you know, that's, and that's great. Uh, but, you know, they were, they were um, all the customers I spoke to were, were frank, and, uh, you know, I take them at their word. They were, you know, happy for the most part. But, you know, they did have some criticism of IBM, and I think the, the main cr criticism I heard from customers uh, and some other attendees I spoke to, and IBM knows this, and we've been saying this as well, is that IBM needs to do a better job of telling the story uh, and less time spent talking about the point products. Now, they, I think IBM's come a long way in the last two years on, around this front. And in fact, I don't get that. Um, I, I don't hear from competitors as much, for instance, uh, that, you know, hey, IBM's got uh, this alphabet soup of products. It's confusing. It's, it's not good for customers. Where you would see that, I would see that in briefings from IBM's competitors. They put up a slide with all these different products. IBM's doing a better job, but it's still a concern uh, of customers. And IBM has acknowledged as much in our analyst uh, uh, Q&A with executives today. You know, they acknowledge that they need to continue to do a better job of telling that story around solutions uh, and less around, hey, it's my pure data box or, uh, you know, my cognitive yeah, implementation. So I've always said that's why services are so important because they can, they can wrap that services wrapper, uh, you know, around that portfolio and bring the solution to bear. And I think the other thing we started to hear more about was this whole Internet of Things. I think a year from now, John, you're going to see a lot more in that in that space. I think we're going to start to see some real teeth. What are you excited about, John? Based on what you saw here, um, I'm I'm really excited by um, the social business story. Um, I think it's not really coherent yet from IBM's standpoint. Um, I think that it's an amazing conversation that, that that everyone wants to have. I just think IBM's doesn't have the seamless products together. They got a lot of legacy with Lotus and some other things that need to be cleaned up a bit positioning wise. But I'm really excited about some of the things they're doing around social, social business. I really think that, that they're on the right track. I think they got the experience. 
That really uh, gets me excited. But I got to say, Dave, the Cube here the past two days, I was very excited by one great production, great event. But more importantly, you know how I feel about the Crowd Chat, right? So Crowd Chat uh, applications, our integrated application part of our CrowdSpots platform was a huge success here. We rolled out it to uh, the hashtag uh, IBM IOD. We had uh, today 210 posts or tweets, because it's on LinkedIn as well, and 776,000 timeline impressions, uh, 1,000 uniques, uh, come in to see that. Yesterday we did only a two hour crowd chat. We had over a million timeline impressions. That means the crowd chat's working. And, 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 I, and when we weren't running the crowd chat, I was here on theCUBE, I felt it was different. I wanted the crowd chat, bot. I wanted it back because I just felt going to Twitter directly was awkward. And I think that's an example of crowd activated innovation that, that we rolled out. And that's, that's kind of in line with the, the, the theme of the show, which is social business. So the, the, the communication that, that the people want to have at these events is proof that IBM's social business strategy is right on the money because that is the future. The crowd consumer, the qualified crowd, that's the new, that's the new sales model, the new marketing model. So you know, harnessing that and putting it into production for lines of business and IT, I think IBM is well ahead of the pack on that front. So well, the Cube I'm excited by that, the I really am. The Cube is a comfortable place and Crowd, <laughs> crowd Chat is a comfortable you know, place. I think we're going to be running Cube interviews here with our guests. I, I and, like and that format, no, I really do. I think running a Crowd Chat throughout the, the day, or the bulk of the day, allows us to capture the essence of the Cube interviews. It's and one, and one, more, one more thing I want to share about what I'm excited about is, I'm excited about the, the fact that you know, we're now in our fourth year at the Cube, the format works, right? We had crowd chats in there. By opening up the data, we are streaming data. We're, you know, as we say, running data, we're streaming information, and we're attracting great people, right? And again, a great lineup here, but yesterday kind of had that moment with the Cube where we had Merv Adrian from Gartner and Ray Wang from the Constellation group, we had James Kibolos today, we, all, all the top analysts love to come here because you know why? Their data that they have in their head is gold and they, you know, sharing it with the world is an amazing dynamic and I think that excites me, Dave, because theCUBE is about sharing, it's about sharing information with the world and you get guys like Merv Adrian out there and Ray Wang, they're sharing, they're open, open sourcing their mind and I think that creates great goodwill, social currency that comes back in spades for them on a 10x basis. So to me, love what we're doing, I'm excited by the crowd chat, excited by the social business. Reinvent next week, uh, check out wikibon.org for all the free research, go to siliconangle.com, see all the blog posts associated with the Cube interviews today, go to youtube.com slash siliconangle, check that out, you'll see the playlists of all the events that we do. Thanks for watching everybody. This really. is theCUBE, social data, social business, IBM IOD exclusive coverage. We'll be back at our next show. Stay with us at Invent, we'll be back. <laughs>